here we are. We are about to start solving quadratic equations that, if you're factoring, are considered unfactorable and therefore unsolvable. Ha ha, not any more. And just wait till you get to college algebra. You're go going to learn even more ways to solve an equation. In particular, many more ways to find the zeros of functions. But right now, let's get to work. Let's solve using, solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. All right, here is our first quadratic equation. We're always going to think in terms of AX squared. Well, let me write it over here. A whatever. A X squared plus B X plus C equals zero. A equals one. B equals negative one. C equals four. Now, let's look at the quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over 2a. You're going to have to write this on your brain. A little brain surgery can't be that bad. Okay, so x equals negative b, and b is negative 1. So let's write a equals, let's write b equals, and let's write C equals. B is negative one, so negative one, plus or minus, that's negative negative one, plus or minus the square root of parentheses, negative one squared minus four times A times C all over 2a. Okay, this is where I make a fool of myself, but I don't believe you can be a teacher if you're not willing to make a total and complete fool of yourself on the internet. So here we go. This is the best way to remember the quadratic formula. Ready? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now you need to sing this to yourself and to your children or your younger siblings, or your spouse, or your partner, every night before you go to sleep so that you're sure to remember it. Now, let's calculate. X equals negative negative one is positive one, plus or minus the square root of 
negative one squared is positive one, minus four times one is negative four, times four is negative 16. All over two times one. So that's going to be X equals one plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over two. X equals one plus or minus the square root of negative one times 15 over two. X equals one plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of 15 all over, all over two. X equals one plus or minus I times the square root of 15 over two. Now, we have to change this to the following. X equals, well, let's do this first. Okay, one over two plus or minus the square root of 15 over two. I. Now this is in A plus B I form. With a plus or a minus and what this means is. X equals one half. Minus the square root of 15. Over two. I comma one half plus the square root of 15 over two I. And those are your solutions. Oops. And that's what you would write in the answer box in my math lab. I know it looks difficult, and it is kind of difficult, until you do all your homework, and maybe do it a second time, and get used to it. And you'd be surprised how fast it all seems normal. And then it doesn't seem that difficult. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at the answer first. Yep, one half. Well, they put the plus first. I put the minus first. That doesn't matter. We have the correct answers. Notice how they're very careful to put I at the end. It's not under the square root ever. Okay. Well, now, when I solve with a quadratic formula, when I have a quadratic term, a linear term, and a constant term, I do have to pull everything over and set it equal to zero. I have to use the uh, I have to use the zero principle. Okay, all these principles. Two, oh. Two 
x squared minus 11x equals 1. I subtract 1 from both sides. And what that gives me is a 0. So I have 2x squared minus 11x minus 1 equals 0. Now, a equals 2, b equals negative 11, c equals negative 1. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. When you draw your fraction bar, start there and then continue all the way through here. You really don't want me to sing again, do you? I don't think you do. All right, X equals negative B, and B is negative 11. Plus or minus the square root of negative 11 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 1. Pull your square root top over all of these numbers and then start here at that negative sign. Draw your fraction bar over here. In fact, I'm going to make this a little bigger. How am I going to do that? No, it's not what I want. OK, width, move up to two or three. All right, whatever. Let's try this again. There, don't forget that your your fraction bar goes starts over here and continues and then over 2a whoops and a is 2 hmm okay so x equals negative negative 11 which is positive 11 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 squared is negative 11 times negative 11 which is positive 121 put it in your cal uh, calendar put it in your calculator and you'll see okay minus four minus four times two is minus eight times negative one is plus eight. All over two times two is four. So, 121 plus eight is 129. 11 plus or minus the square root of 129 over 4. Now let's check out 129. 129 equals 3 times 43. Nope, there is not a perfect square hiding in there. So, I don't need to simplify 129. In fact, I bet that's my answer. Let's see. 
Yes, how about that? OK, I was taught to always put the negative first, so I'm going to. There's actually a reason we'll talk about in the next class for doing it that way. X equals 11 minus the square root of 129 over 4, comma, 11 plus the square root of 129 over 4. That's what X equals. Now, if you're asking, well, why don't we put that in a calculator? We need exact answers. You won't get any credit, you'll get zero for um, incorrect answers that include not exact answers. I know it seems silly, certainly seems silly to people who are going into engineering, but that's the way it is. Okay. Here's another one. 2x squared plus 4 equals 5x. Your linear term is over here. We're going to move it. Minus 5x minus 5x. So that this is 0. We'll have 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. All right, A is 2. B is negative 5. C is positive 4. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So X equals negative negative 5 <clears throat> plus or minus the square root of b squared parentheses negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 4 all over 2 times 2. So x equals negative negative 5, which is positive 5, plus or minus the square root of 25. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, minus 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, so minus 32 over 2 times 2, which is 4. Now let me make sure I've got my A, B, and C correct. Okay. Well, let's see. 25 minus 32 is negative 7 x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 all over 4, which is 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 7 over 4, which is 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times
times the square root of seven all over four. And remember that the square root of negative one is I, so we're going to have X equals five plus or minus I times the square root of seven over four, which becomes five over four plus or minus the square root of seven over four I. Amazing. And I have it in this form because of that I. I numbers have to be put in this form. However, they're getting kind of loosey-goosey, aren't they? Now they've got their I up there with the square root of seven. Well, good for them. Let's see what it says. Use a comma to separate answers as needed. Type an exact answer using radicals and I as needed. So it doesn't say you actually have to put it in A plus B I form. On the other hand, back up here, simplify your answer. Type an exact answer using radicals as needed. Express complex numbers in terms of I. Use a comma to separate answers as needed. Here they don't say to use A plus B I form, but they do. So, given that you've got three chances for each homework problem, um, I would try it whatever way you like the first time. And if it's counted wrong, then do it the other way. I can almost guarantee, excuse me, that you can do this, no matter what. And there you go. Let's do another one. Then we're going to go back to each answer and talk about its name. Its name is important. We have x squared plus 2x minus 2 equals 0. There's a one there. A is one. B is two. C is negative two. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over to a, e, and let me make that nice and thick. Just to make sure it's visible. X equals negative. Two is positive, so I don't have to put it in parentheses. Negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared minus four times one times negative two all over two times one. And that will be X equals negative two plus or minus the square root of four 
negative four times one is negative four, times negative two is positive eight, so plus eight over two. X equals negative two plus or minus the square root of 12 over two. Now, you are going to have to simplify because there's a square root hiding in 12, a perfect square, I should say, hiding in 12, because 12 equals four times three. Four is a perfect square. So X equals negative two plus or minus the square root of four times three all over two. X equals negative two plus or minus the square root of four times the square root of three all over two. And X equals negative two plus or minus two times the square root of three over two. Oh boy, there's so much more to do with this problem than you've had to do so far. So I am going to go back up just to have more room. Let's see, maybe I will do this. We'll go there. Notice that each of these terms has a two. So up in the numerator, I have a GCF of two, leaving me with the leftovers of negative one plus or minus the square root of three over two. You can check yourself by saying two times negative one. Yes, that's negative two. And two times uh, the square root of three is two times the square root of three. Okay. So now notice that a two up here will cancel a two down there. As long as that two is pulled out as a factor, you can cancel with the two down there. And you're going to be left with X equals negative one plus or minus the square root of three. And so this is X equals negative one minus the square root of three, comma, negative one plus the square root of three. Let's see if my math lab agrees, and it does. Okay, now let's go back, 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 back to the very beginning. And we're going to talk about, uh, talk about what kinds of solutions these are. You have to know the names. The negative the square root of three and the square root of three are called real because they're real numbers. irrational because they can never be turned into a fraction. Real, irrational, zeros. Or actually, since we're just solving equations, you'll discover it's, they're close. Um, we'll just call them solutions. 
Now let me show you with the calculator that I really am telling the truth. I'm going to have to Use the whole screen. There we go. And I'm going to pull up this. And there we are. I'm going to take the square root of three, second x squared. 3, right arrow key to come to the outside, and hit enter. And there you have a nice decimal answer. Actually, this goes on forever and ever and ever. Now, I'm going to see if I can turn that into a fraction by using math frac. Math frac enter. Math frac will turn just about anything that's capable of being a fraction into a fraction. But this is irrational, which means it can never be a fraction. Why is that important? Because it's really difficult to find on the x-axis. It lives on the x-axis with the rest of the real numbers but it's hard to find. Okay. Here we have zero minus the square root of two I and zero plus the square root of two I. These are called complex conjugate solutions of this equation. Complex because they're complex numbers. Conjugates because they're conjugates. Complex conjugate solutions. These are real and rational solutions. Negative six can be can become a um, a fraction just by putting it over one. Seven can be made into a fraction just by putting it over one. In fact, seven can be made into a fraction by making it in, into fourteen over two. These are called real rational solutions. Actually, because we're talking about zeros, we're going to call them real, comma, rational zeros. Negative six and seven are real, rational zeros. The same for negative two and five. They are real because they're real numbers. They're on the x-axis. Rational because they can easily be made into <clears throat> easily be made into fractions. Move. I had to move my footrest. Real rational zeros. OK. Now these look at this one half plus the square root of 15 over 2 I and its conjugate. These are complex conjugate solutions of this equation right there. 
complex conjugate solutions. Now here we have real numbers. Notice we don't have an I there, so they're real. They live on the x-axis, but they're hard to find and can never be turned into a fraction. These are conjugates, but for reasons I don't know, we don't call them that. We just call them real irrational solutions. real irrational solutions. Of that equation right there. Here we have I numbers again. These are complex conjugate. solutions. And this is a real, these are real irrational solutions to the equation. And it looks like I missed one. Oh my goodness, there are a lot more. But I have faith that you are able to work these now. So I'll talk to you later. And I hope these videos, there are two of them, remember, will be able to help you. See you later. Bye-bye.